Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. God bless you all for joining the three days dry fasting. This is the second prayer line out of 12 prayer lines. We'll be praying four times daily. We've done one earlier at 12. And this is day, um, day one, second prayer line. We'll be praying for an hour. Um, I did give some instructions in the first prayer line in case you missed it you can watch it on face you can listen to it on facebook the facebook kind of muted the parts where some of the songs were played but you will hear the rest of it okay so i'm gonna unmute the prayer line for you guys to pray in the holy ghost if you are joining us for the first time this is the three days fasting we are not eating we are not drinking anything i bless water on the first one for those that are not able to do it totally dry, they can drink water. For those that are not able to do it without eating, they can break their fast at six. Or they can just eat and just join us to pray. For those that are able to fast, this is for dry fasting, no food, no water, till Sunday. It's three days fasting. And the scriptures that we're reading is Jonah chapter 1 to chapter 4. And... um I pray that God will give you the strength to do this with us. For now, we want to pray. If you want to join us on the prayer line and you are on Facebook audio, check the um, the caption for the audio. You will see the login details for the fasting, for the prayer line, so you can join us. Now, if you're on the prayer line and you have noise in your background, you can mute your line or you can join on Facebook or that way we don't hear your, the noise in your background. God bless all of you. We'll pray for some minutes, and then as the Spirit leads, I'll share whatever message that the Holy Spirit has for us. All participants are unmuted. <laughs> Rekele baba sinti le konto robo siadara. Rekete kata baba. Reka ba siki ya kata ya ba somti ya kata ya baba. Roso bahi kaya baba. Rekele bo siki ha 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 ha. Rekele ya gado bo siaga ga ga ga. Rekenti ya kata kaka 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 kaka. Roko robo bo 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 sikende ya baba ba siande le bo somto yo bo bo ira kada ya kada baba sikende ba soka ya 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 reti kaya ba sinti ya kata ya ronto no koto koro ba siakata rati ya baba ba siakala baba ire kito bo siakande le bo siande le ba rakate kete kete ya baba. Ondo robo siya ha ha, soko robo siya kaya baba, raka tia kata ya baba, son tono baha nikiti ya robo siya ha, ikaya baba, raka re koro kota ya baba, sekele baba ba, rasekele baba ba, raka hiya baba siya nene baba ba siya nene baba, rekete pas yoko togo soka ya baba, Rekinti ya kati ya kata kata Rakala basika ya baba Ide karabasiki ya baba Randika ya baba Rekati ya baba baba Runto lobobo sinu ya baba Rakata ya baba siya baba Rungo brahi kete bosi ya gadaba Rakata ya baba Rekete kete kete ya papapa Soko lobo shia ateke ni baba Ranti kanaba sika ya baba, regarde bo siki ya baba, rakanti ya kato soko boto uba ya baba, rekati ya baba, rokoto ya baba, seke ni ba siaka bo suba ya baba, rakada ba sige de 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 bo sige de bo sika ya baba, rakata kata 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 kata, okundo bo bo siaka ta ya baba. Ile kana baba, so konto lo bo siya kandili baba, ikete kete kete baba, sonto lo bo siya kandili si digi baba, koko 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 rakata ya baba baba, 
We can deliver Baba Baba. We get the boss seated the Baba. Rakatia Baba Sia Gada Bosia Baba. We get the kitty kaya baba baba. The kiki ya baba. Send the evil sukuru sia kataya baba. Kaka 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 kaya baba. Rindi kara baba send the little bosia kada bosia. Ye kiti 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 kiti. Rindi kada bosi kia baba. Rakata ya baba baba baba. Ye kiti 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 kiti. Rakati kita baba baba. Rindi kapa si kiri baba baba. Rikati ye baba baba. Rige de baba si kene baba baba. Raga di gaga basi ge de baba baba. Raka di baba baba baba. Rige de ge de ge de bosi ya ne li bosi ya gada bosi ya baba baba. Rasi kaya baba baba. Ya kati ya baba. Seke de kato so kobo so kobo bo. Ya kata kata kata. Unto do bosi ya ne li baba. Ike ti ya kato so kobo so kobo bo 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 bo. Rakati ya pa 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 pa. Ila kando do bosi ya ne li baba baba. Ike li kado so bi ya hani kado si baba baba. Ya gadi ge de bosi ya ne li baba. Dogo 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 basi ki ya kado si ya baba. Ile ke te ke te kata ya baba. Rasi ka ya baba sende ya baba. Re ke te ke te ke 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 ke. Ro koto koto koto. Ika pa pa pa. Ika pa 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 pa. Rakati kata pa pa. Rakati pa pa pa. Rande ke te ba ba ba. Se ke te ke te ke te ke te ke te. Raga ba ba ba. Ike ri ba ba ba. Ike ri ba ba ba. Roko boro bo sukuro bo shia ba ba ba. Ike ri ba ba ba. Ike ri ba ba ba. Rade ke te ba ba ba. Kaga ga ya ba ba. Rige ri ba ba ba. Rige ri ba ba ba. Raka da ba ba. Roko to ko to bo bo bo. Ike ra ba ba ba. Ika ra ba ba. Sia ga do bo si ka ya ba ba. Rika ta ya ba ba. Rande ka ba ba ba. Reko toko so pa ne ba si ka ya ba ba. Raka di ya ba ba. Son to lo bo bo. Ika la ha se ke le ba ba. Raka ti ya ka ta ya ba ba. Ra se ke le ba ba ba. Raka ti ya pa pa si ki ya ba ba ba. Rende ge de ge de ga bo si ka ya ba ba. Reke te ba si ka ya ba ba. Reka ta ya se ke le ba son te. I ka 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 ka. Rande ga de bo si ya ba ba. Raka ne ba si ya ka ta ya ba ba. Rande ka ya ba ba si ya ba ba ba. Rige de bo si ge ye ba so ti ya ga do si ya ba ba. Raka la ba shana ya ba ba. Rende ko to ra si ba ha se ke ya ba ba. Roko to ba si ya ne ga do si ya ha. Raka ta ya ba ba. Rike te ya ba ba. Rekete ya baba, o kata ya baba, si kete 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 kete. Sonto no bo sente le baba, ira kata ya baba, ya kata ya baba, ra kata ya baba baba baba. Kaka 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 kaka. Rekete baba 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 baba. Kaka 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 kaka. Koko to koto ba 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 ba. Kaka neke de bo 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 si ka 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 Rande koto ba di kada ba ba ba, kaka ne koto 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 ba ba si kada ba ba, ile kada ba so no no bo si ande ne ba ba, rande kada ba ba si ande ne ba 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 ba, roko no bo si ge ne ba ba, re kada bo si kada ba ba, ratia kada ba ba, ratia ba ba ba, rakada bi ya ba ba, 
Oposo Bodo Bosuno Bosadi Yababa Kaka 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 Nakata Baba Sia Papa 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 Kaka 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 Oko kaka 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 ya baba, soko kaka ya kili baba si antera baba, ona ra baba si kili baba baba baba, iti iti goto soka ya baba, kaka 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 kaka, oko robo si ya baba baba baba, kaka 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 kaka, oko baba baba si ya baba baba, iti iti baba baba baba. Rakadia Baba Baba, O Koso Polo Bosia Baba, Rakada Baba, Rikete Kata Ya Baba, Rokoto Baba Baba, Rokoto Baba Baba, Raka Baba Baba Baba, Kaka Kaka Kaka, Kaka 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 Kaka, Koko 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 Koko, Rakadi Basi Kira Baba, Rikete Boso Polo Boso Polo Bosia Ya Baba. Raga da ba 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 sinda ya ba ba, ikere ba ba, soka ya ba si ya kata ya ba, weke te ke te kata ya ba ba, koko kora ba si ne le ba sinte ya ba ba, koko sa ba 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 si ne le ba ba ba, rakata ya ba ba ba, unda ya ba sonto lo bo si ya kata ya ba ba, koko lo bo si ya kata ya ba ba, koko ka ya ba ba. Rande gede bo siya baba, kaka ya baba baba ya kata ya baba, kaka ya baba baba ya kala baba, sekete kaka 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 kaka, kaka le ba siya kate ya baba baba, inde gede bo siya dele bo bo siya baba, rakata ya baba, oh ya baba, ira gada sota ya baba, oh siya baba ya kala baba sekele baba. Undo no bo si ne le baba, raka da baba, shaka ya baba, koso ba la baba, ira baba baba, koka ka ya baba, sekete ya baba, raka ya baba, ukete ya baba, ora sekete ya sekete ya, kaka ne le bo sonto ya bo sekete ya baba, la tekete kata kata kata, ikata ya baba sekete ya baba. Koto 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 koto, rakatia papa, rakatia papa, rakatia papa, ora kata papa papa, seke ne ba ba ba, kaka ne keto se koto bo saka ya ba, saka ne ba 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 ba, regi ne ba 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 si a kata ya ba, se koto ya ba ba, rakatia kata papa, so ka ya ba si ka ya ba ba, i kata ya ba ba ba. Akaya Baba, Santo Lobo Santa Ya Baba, Rekete Kete Kete, Ukoto Basi Gada Baba, Ira Gada Usi Kaya Baba, Rigada Bo Usi Kaya Baba, Rigada Bo Usi Kaya Baba, Ikada Baba Baba Si Dili Baba Baba, Ikete Kete 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 Kete, Ukoto Baba Baba Baba. Kiki 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 koko 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 si kada baba kiki 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 rasa da baba baba raka baba 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 rige di bo soko di bo bo ira ka baba baba ire kata ya baba ondo di bo si gaya baba kaka 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 ya ba 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 kaka 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 rende gado bo si ga ya ba ba rega ba 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 rege di ba 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 raka si ga da ba ba son tolo bo si a ha teke ya ba ba rike ya ba ba si a ba ba rike ya ba ba reka ti ya ba ba ya kana ba shanta. Ira ba si ke ne ba ba, koko robo si de ba ba ba, koko robo si ge de ba ba, 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless all of you. How is everyone feeling right now? How are you feeling right now? Thank you, Jesus. So the reason for fasting is for fresh fire and breakthrough. I pray that God will give all of you fresh fire in the name of Jesus. And when I was putting down breakthrough, when I was putting down the reason for fasting, 
I was hearing that it's breakthrough in every area of your life. So receive supernatural breakthrough in every area of your life. In the name of Jesus. As I'm saying this, I can see chains just falling off. Breakthrough in every area of your life. I see chains falling off. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Things will begin to work out for you. Things will begin to work out for you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So while we were praying, God was giving me a scripture. Galatians 6. I'm going to read from from verse 1 to verse 10. Galatians 6 from verse 1 to 10. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back into the right path. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Let me read it again. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, so let's see another believer starts to, um, I'm going to give you an example, um, fornicate, okay? It says, it says, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back into the right path. So you who are godly, you who your relationship with God is good, you should gently and humbly help that person back into the right path. And while helping them, be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Because there's a possibility that the devil might speak through the person to tell you the reasons why they are doing this and why it's okay for them to do it. Or the devil himself might approach you with the same offer that he offered that believer. Meaning when you see somebody, maybe that used to watch the videos with you or that goes to church with you, Suddenly, this person is no longer interested. You should gently and humbly talk to that person. Help them back onto the right path. Don't just condemn them and say, look at you. I thought you were always doing holy, holy. Look at you. Uh -huh. don't, don't, don't even make it harder. You should show them love. And not only that, you should help them. Remind them of why they repented in the first place. Just remind them of how merciful God is, that God can still forgive them. Just remind them of how sin kills. Just give them some scriptures that will encourage them. You understand? And try to bring them back. Don't be, oh, you're better than them. Or don't, because this, this race, it's not easy. Being born again, being saved, it's not easy at all. Some people are stronger than some. Some people are still weak. Some people are easily tempted. Some people are able to like withstand some temptation. So if you are stronger, you should be the one to encourage some people to try to come back. You may not know that that conversation that you have with them will have them thinking. When you hang up the phone with them, they might think about what you said. And before you know, they may start crying and they will repent again. But don't be acting too holy or or like you are the better one. Or you, you never sin. Because in reality, eh, everyone sins. All of us have sinned. We have all come short of the glory of God. Everyone. All. Everyone. The other day, was it yesterday? God was telling me about the heart of, the heart of people. The heart of man is desperately wicked. Like, if God can really open your eyes to see into the private life of people, you will realize that no one is good. He said, if God can really open your eyes to see into the life of people, you will realize that no one is good. There is no one that is always holy and never sins. No one is good. Even Jesus, when that guy in the Bible called him good master, he said, why callest thou me good? Why are you calling me good? He said, no one is good except my Father in heaven, except God. And he knows why he's saying that. Some people can come in front and they will 
do all this holiness, holiness. But as they are getting off that stage, you don't know the kind of thoughts they're thinking. Sin is not only when you commit something. You can already sin from thinking it. You didn't know that? You don't know if the people they are even talking to, they hate them. They, don't, they can't even stand them. They're just there because they have to be there. Nobody is truly good. So if you think that, oh, this one is a disappointment or this one is bad, this wait till you actually see into the heart of man. Huh. Let me tell you, I have had dreams and God has shown me some people the way they are inside, meaning their heart. Some of them were shocking. There are some that physically, they were not too friendly. They were not too friendly. There's this particular case that shocked me. These people, physically, they were not friendly at all. They seemed like trouble physically. But it, but it was only a character problem. Because when God showed me how they are, Inside, they love God. They love Him so much. They are very nice people. Their heart is pure. But physically, they have a little character problem. So now, in the church, people use the physical approach, the physical appearance, the physical, the attitude that you portray physically to judge your heart. And this is wrong because a lot of people have been misjudged. There are people that act so nice to you, but they are witches. Their heart is wicked. They hate you. They can't stand you. There are some that just have a small attitude problem, but they don't have any hatred for you. They truly love God. Their heart is pure. They are not plotting evil against anyone. They just have a little attitude problem. Or they are just so straightforward when they talk. But they don't mean any harm. There are some that they are not straightforward. They accept everything you say. They are always supporting whatever you say. So you will look like you have someone that is always supporting you. You have someone that, that you like. If you want to pick someone in the team, no need to pray about it. This one definitely has to be in the team because this one supports you very well. But God doesn't look at that. God doesn't judge like that. That one may just be doing that so you would like them. That one may be an agent of darkness. And they know that they have to be nice for you to trust them, for you to get close to them. Meanwhile, the other one that has a small character problem may truly be, be, be pure at heart. But they just have a little attitude problem. So we can't really tell. So if we see another believer falling, we just need to pray for them, help them out of it if we can. But he says we should be careful so that we ourselves don't fall into the same temptation that they fell into. So we should be careful how we bring them back. We should be cautious. He says share each other's burdens and, this, and in this way obey the law of Christ. Share each other's burden. So if it's they, so let's say the person backslid, they were backsliding because they didn't have money for their rent or they got fired from their job. Listen to them. Tell them you understand. If you can help them, you help them. But also use the wisdom of God to talk to them. Because sometimes some people could get to a point where they are so frustrated. They don't know what to do. Don't come there and be acting like um, you, you have to kind of like share the burden with them. Explain to them, maybe if you two, you've lost your job before at a certain point. You tell them how that one happened, how God came through for you, that you know the same God will come through for them. You know what I mean? It says, share each other's burdens and in this way, obey the law of Christ. If you think you are too important to help someone, you are only fooling yourself. If you think you are too important to help someone, you are only fooling yourself. You are not that important. I love that scripture. It says, if you think that you are too important or you are too special 
to help somebody. You are fooling yourself. You are not that important. And then verse 4, it says, Pay careful attention to your own work. For then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done. And you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. Oh, I love this scripture. Make sure you guys add it to what you're going to read. Galatians 1 and Galatians 6 from verse 1 to 10. Verse 6, verse 4 is what I'm reading. It says, pay careful attention to your own work. Like focus on your own relationship, your own work. How far you are with God. For then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done. And you won't need to compare yourself with anyone else. For we are each responsible for our own conduct. Last week or two weeks ago, I was in the restroom downstairs and I heard clearly. It says, you can only speak for yourself. I even told Pastor Isaac about it. God was telling me, I can only speak for myself. Meaning, I can only speak for myself. Some people, they don't want to pay attention to their own work, to their own relationship with God. They want to always compare themselves to others. They want to always know what others are doing. Yesterday, God told me, God said, we all have our own different assignments. We all have different missions. Most times, the devil has a way of wasting your time. Instead of paying attention to your own work, instead of focusing on your own relationship with God and how you can get better, how you can do more, he he makes you to start paying attention to other people's work. He makes you to start criticizing other people, judging other people, comparing yourself to other people. Why do you even care? how they do their own. I was telling my cousin, was it yesterday when we were talking? I said, me, I am just in my own world. And he knows because he stayed here with us. See, when I'm on my Facebook page preaching, I don't even know what is happening out there. I am so focused. That's why for two years, this month is two years since I've been preaching. For two years, I have not been distracted. It's like I'm just in my own little house. doing. You know what I mean? Like I'm so focused. I'm not trying to see what people say about me, what people are thinking of me, what they think about my message, what they think about the way I do deliverance. Or the, it's, it's not, it's not, that's not, that's not my business. That's not, I just focus. I focus. And if you live like that, you will accomplish a lot. You will avoid distractions, which is one of the things that God told me to tell you guys when we're praying earlier. Your eyes will be on Jesus. Your ears will be on him. You, Because all these little distractions, they can go a long way to hinder you or to, to, to slow down the work that God is doing with you. So you have to pay careful attention to your own work, to what you are doing. To how far you've gone. To what you still have to do. Not to put your mind on everybody else's work. There are some people that. They may criticize you. They may do this. They may do that. And you will get mad. Oh why did you say this about me? Don't worry about it. Most times I see people that try to. Talk bad about me. Try to. Discourage people to watch me. And I just look into their life. And I see that a lot of them need help. Yeah. Like I I just, I could just see that they need help, deliverance or grace. They just need grace. A lot of them need forgiveness. A lot of them are struggling. A lot of them are confused. A lot of them, they, they, they are not even in a good relationship with God. So when I see this, I'm like, this kind of person is not supposed to annoy me. This person still has a long way to go. So why would I get distracted by such person that has no, like, that that doesn't even know from left to right what to do with their life? You, you are so focused. You're doing what God told you to do. 
but you are going to be distracted by somebody that doesn't even know <laughs> their left from their right or that, 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 that somebody that their life is so messed up. Can't you see? Once you see that this person has no, is in no place to even criticize your work, this person just needs help or this person is talking because the devil is using them, it will not even piss you off. Haven't you noticed that most of the people that criticize pastors, that criticize people that are successful, if you look into their life, they are very miserable. Why would you stop doing what you're going to do because of a miserable person? They are very confused. They don't even have jobs. Nothing is working for them. There are some ministries, some pastors, pastors they, 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 they talk bad about somebody like me. Because they are not understanding how I can be so successful. I've had some people that I've helped financially in the ministry. They will, after watching me for some time, before you know, they will start saying some negative stuff on Facebook. They will go and come back. And then they will tell me they are sorry they stopped watching. That they are back. And God will tell me that it's because they have gone and they have searched and they have seen that there's no one like me. You know how when you pamper people, you help people, people begin to take you for granted. They begin to think that, oh, there are better people out there than you. But all you did was help them, even financially. You gave them money, hundreds of dollars. You're not supposed to, but you still help them. They start letting the devil speak to them. Before you know, they start to write things on their page to insult you or whatever. They start sharing a lot of other people, watching other people, and they come back and say, oh, sorry, they are full-time, they are back. Because they have seen that there's no one like you. See, let me tell you the way God works. If God eh, uses you to bless someone and all you do for them is good, all you do for them is good, and this person turns around, to turn that good, that good you did for them, to use it to try to bring you down, to lie against you, they will never know peace wherever they go until they come back to you and they apologize or they confess. See, our God, eh? God knows what he's doing. This is not just for pastors or anybody, even you as an individual. If all you did for somebody, it's good. From your kind heart, no evil intention, no plan to do anything to like you. What you did, you came from your heart, and this person turns around, start writing nonsense on their Facebook about you, and and it's amazing because sometimes you will know it's you they are talking about, but you don't do anything, and suddenly maybe they block you, they leave you, and months later they come back, and say they are back. Sorry. It's because they were haunted while they were away from you. They had no peace. Their conscience kept haunting them because they know that you did not wrong them. No matter who they go to, even if you're a pastor and you did go to your members and they go out there to spoil your name, no matter which other pastor, in fact, they will never find a pastor that will treat them good again until they come to you. And do the right thing. Yeah. You reap what you sow. You can't do evil and expect to reap good. It's not, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. The good that that person did. Will keep fighting for that person. And it will keep haunting you. So if you are one of those people. You need to repent. And stop. Stop. Stop switching from man of God to man of God. This woman of God probably said something and you're upset. Boom. You start writing things on your page. Like you want to insult this person. Before you know, you have a new person. You are sharing on Facebook. Because of Facebook... It's so easy. Today, you don't want to watch this one again because of something they said. Or maybe you ask them for money. They refuse. Because some of you, you feel like man of God, woman of God. They are like um, a bank. You just go. 
See, we already feed you spiritually. By right, you should be giving and sharing all good things with us. You know, I was telling my cousin the other day, I said, I can speak for myself. There is no man of God or woman of God. I can speak for myself. That will do a lot of the things that I do for some of my members. And I know this for a fact. I am doing a birthday party. Normally in birthdays, people buy you gifts. People bring you stuff. People want to take care of stuff for you. It's your birthday celebration. Three days Holy Ghost encounter. Instead, I am the one. I have paid for over 20 something. Actually, I have over 20 rooms or so. Or 20 rooms that we've booked out. I'm paying for almost 30 people's hotel room. Because we're putting three, two, four in a room. What is 30? There are almost 40 people. I bought tickets for almost 20 people to come. Like, I don't have to do this. You don't understand. I don't have to. So when somebody is so nice to you, you think that God will support you going to, to, to spoil the name of this person? You probably will die. <laughs> I'm serious. You might die fighting this kind of person with such grace. Don't even let the devil mess with you like that because the devil is wicked. He might start putting ideas in your head about against this person so that you will start thinking evil or trying to... Don't do that. There is no man of God or woman of God that can do this or that will do this. First of all, a lot of men of God and women of God, let me just tell you that, that you see on Facebook, are struggling financially. A lot of them don't have that grace, don't have that financial, whatever, grace. Ministry is not easy. Ministry is, you see, <laughs> financial, f money is a big obstacle for ministry. Some people want to do this, but they don't have. Me, you see me easily giving 1500 this amount, that amount. So people think, oh, this is how it is with everyone. I've had people go and come back. The ones they went to, instead of giving them, they asked them for a lot. They specifically gave them amounts that they want from them. So be careful. Be careful. I'm just using myself as an example. But as a believer too, be careful how you try to spoil somebody else. Focus on your own work. Stop comparing yourself with other people. Stop trying to bring somebody else down. Just because you don't understand how they do stuff, don't try to talk bad about them. Focus on yourself. Go down on your knees and pray to God for grace. Like, see, if I see somebody that carries so much grace, me, I will go and see what they are doing. I will watch them closely. I will probably even want to be their friend to see if the grace will rub off on me. But the last thing I will do is to start to insult them or to start to talk bad about them or to start to try to bring them down. That's not the way to tap from the grace. That's like, bring. how will you be fighting someone that carries so much grace? <laughs> someone that God is so like, God. you can see God all over this one. And you want to go fight this one. <laughs> Are you not afraid? Are you not afraid? If you see somebody like that, you don't fight them. This is not for school now. Or is it for school? This is for home. Do you know what you just picked up? Okay, go, 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 go get ready. Thank you, Jesus. My son, I'm supposed to wake him up like three minutes ago. And I was just saying in my mind that I pray that he wakes up. And the boy just woke up and came in here. I'm so happy. Like I used my mind to think it and he woke him up. Because normally I have to wake him up. Thank you, Jesus. So be careful. I don't know what this message is for, but be careful. Don't get carried away. Don't get too comfortable with uh, women of God, men of God. And don't be a liar. That's one of the things that God told me. 
to tell you guys about this fast. Avoid lies. There's somebody, I don't know if she's listening. This person messaged me a few days ago talking about how she's struggling financially. And that um, I said, um, why she was typing that? She said that she pays her tithes to her church. And she even pays a lot of bills in the church to help the church. Besides Titan, she pays some bills in the church to help the church. But right now she ha- she needs some money to complete her rent. That she doesn't know what's going on. I said, this conversation you're having, you should be having it with your pastor. Since you are so helpful in church. Are you guys listening? Like... If you have a member that is so active, paying tight nonstop, even paying some bills in the church, and once in a while that member go, comes through difficulty, the pastor will be willing to hear the person out, right? This is just common sense. And she said, yes, eh, but I also pay tight to you sometimes. <laughs> I say tight is not something that you can switch from church to church just like that you understand that also make sure you are led by the spirit of god so you know exactly where you tithe because sometimes you may be paying tight but you may be paying it to the wrong place you might be paying it to the place that god has not directed you to for instance if somebody has been feeding you spiritually if that's where you connect with and the person is like doing deliverance on you, doing all this for you. If you're getting blessed by this person, but whenever it's time to pay tight, you take it to somebody else that you hardly even listen to them. To you, you are tightened, but in the eyes of God, you've not even paid tight. This is just a spiritual principle. That's right. So I now told her, I said, well, with this person, I've actually done deliverance on this one before. I've prayed for this one severally. But what caught my attention is she complained of financial problem and she's the one that mentioned by herself that she pays faithfully to her church and she also helped with some bills in the church without me even asking. I didn't even ask that. She was just typing it. So I now told her that your pastor should be the one you're having this conversation with, not me. You need to explain, ask him what's going on. You understand what I mean? Not a Facebook pastor that you're just watching. She now said, I, I do pay tight to you too sometimes. And I was like, hmm, this one. I don't know what this one wants. I now prayed for her. I now asked her, how much is the money? Not because I wanted to give her. She said, oh, no, no, it's okay. Um, um, it's okay. Um, your prayer is enough for the money. But she now called, but I didn't answer. This same person approached my cousin. Pastor Isaac Samuel II complained to Pastor Isaac Samuel II. And Pastor Isaac Samuel II prayed and gave us $700. (laughs) This one that has a church where she pays bills in the church, pays tithes steadily in the church. Like, I'm just trying to tell you guys these things of how some of these people lie. They are so manipulative. They just feel like they can dupe men of God. And they feel like their lives will be good. And no, it's a curse. You may think you are smart and you know what you're doing. But but you don't know that there's someone that's seen everything. Seen that evil thing you're doing. Pastor gave her $700. And after that, this one came back to me again. And she said, please, I shouldn't push her away. That she's, she's sorry that she's paying her tithe to her church, that she's supposed to pay it to me. I say, why me? She said, because I am the one that she always sees in her dreams all the time. That I am her spiritual mother. I say, see, don't do anything based on feelings or emotions. Make sure you are led by the spirit. I say, don't pay your tithe to me. Go and pray to God about this. I'm not interested in your tithe. I'm just trying to tell you to be led by the spirit. See, honestly, I'm not interested in your tithe. I'm not God that put me in this in this thing can take care of me. He knows how to do his things. But I don't like people thinking that because 
they pay tight. I should now take them like so special or fall for their lives. My dear, you can take your money back. I don't need it. I pay tight to my bishop. I don't like, I don't tie it around his neck. If I even tell you how much tight I pay, nobody in my ministry pays even half of what I pay. But you don't see me going around trying to make it seem like he owes me anything. That's between me and my God. And I told her, I said, no, don't pay tight to me. Stop using your emotions or your feelings to do this. She said, please don't push me away. It is you I see all the time in my dreams. I said, go and watch this deliverance video. It is well with you. This same one went to meet my cousin. Trying to ask my cousins. Um, I don't know what she was trying to do with my cousin. Pastor Isaac Sanwa. And Pastor Isaac said, I told you to, to ask God who your prophet is. Because see, most times some of you, until you locate your prophet, you will be like a sheep without shepherd. You would think that you belong somewhere. You know how when you feel like you belong somewhere, but you really don't belong there. Until you locate your prophet. My bishop has preached this message before. You will be like sheep without shepherd. In fact, you will be like an orphan that doesn't belong anywhere. This thing I'm telling you, you can go pray about it and God will enlighten you. My, my cousin now asked her, he said, I thought I told you to pray to God and ask who your prophet is. She said, yes, she has prayed and God hasn't told her. He said that sometimes it could be through someone that God is always showing you in the dream. This girl did not even tell him that she told me that she's always seen me in the dream. <laughs> I pray that she's listening to this because sometimes you guys don't know that we communicate as man of God and woman of God. We do communicate. We are in the spirit. There are some people that I can tell you when you're chatting with me, there are sometimes I've had so many people, the spirit of God will tell me she's lying. Lately, I have been having people that ask me for baby. They want to have a baby. In fact, in one day I had like seven people. And all of them, I heard clearly, ask if they are married. All of them said no. One of them was even saying, so must I be married before I have a child? I say, yes, sweetie. So what we should pray for now is for you to get a husband. And then I was even nice. She said, what if the age is no longer on my side? What is, I say, I'm trying to help you. I can't pray for you to get pregnant when you're not married. My father would not answer that prayer. You understand that I'm not here to just throw out prayer, answer prayer. I, I, I kind of want you to live right. The woman was not pleased with me. You understand what I mean? So this our work that we do is not easy. We deal with people that come lying, come trying to... Honestly speaking, I know a bunch of people in my ministry that are so committed to this ministry. And if they are truthful to themselves, they can say it that I've been tithing faithfully, attending programs, sharing videos, and I've come through maybe one or two, two times where they had some issues. And I, I have given them money to help them. And I also know a lot of people that they have never paid offering to my ministry, but I still give them money. So I'm not going based on that. But if you go to a church, you pay bills in the church to help the pastor. You pay tithes steadily and you go through one or two pro unless if you're always going through problem every because some of you you know how to pay tight and the next minute you want to collect the tight back in in a cunning way and eh, i i can't pay this bill please help me maybe they've paid 400 dollar tight and then they will go and bring a bill that is 400 dollars so that it's like they're getting their money back from the pastor oh i know some of you like that here that do that but all these things is god that will judge but if you are so faithful in the ministry, the pastor himself will help you in the time of your difficulty, even without you asking. When God says you should bring, bring that tithe and offering to, to the church so there will be meat in the storehouse, the meat in the storehouse is also there to help the members in time of needs, the ones that truly, genuinely need help. So you cannot be giving your money into a storehouse of somewhere paying bills there, and then you are going to another place to be asking for help. It's not right. You go talk to your pastor, and your pastor will pray with you, and the church could see how they can help you. 
but not to be going around different people, maybe because you've given one or two offering. See, don't be thinking because you've given me offering, I owe you anything. No. If, you, if this was a building and you enter for a service, you will give offering. In fact, you are the ones robbing God because every time you, woman of God, come online, come online. I come online all this time. You watch video, you don't give offering. What if you had come into my church all the time we're doing online? There's no way the offering box will not pass by you before the end of the service. So because you've given offering doesn't mean I owe you. I don't owe you. I've already given you spiritual food. You've already watched deliverance video. You're always drinking water and all that. Don't feel like the pastor owes you. But if, if they are led to help you, they will help you. But don't lie to get help. Don't lie to get help. Don't you think the person you're speaking to hears from God? Like they hear from God. So when you're lying, just because they didn't say anything, it doesn't mean they don't know that you're lying. They know. They're just observing you to see if you will come back and repent from this lie. To see if you will say, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what led. And that kind of money, you don't even enjoy it. You will stay broke if this is what you keep doing. Let God lead you all the time. Stop running from past church to church, church to church. You are like a sheep without shepherd. You don't have a prophet. You don't have a shepherd. You don't really belong anywhere. You think you belong somewhere, but you don't. You are confused. Don't let Facebook deceive you. Don't become a church prostitute because of Facebook. If it was in real life, you go to this church. This is your church. You go there every Sunday, every week. But now on Facebook, because of Facebook, you go to every church. You are in every church. Now you don't even know which church you belong to. Internet has made it so confusing for you. Be careful. You understand? Be careful. Just be careful. I just gave you that example for a reason. She told me God shows her me in the dream. She said it herself. And she, she's telling somebody else something else. <laughs> How can you even believe anything they say? <laughs> if they can lie about little things like this. And I've done deliverance on this one before on Facebook Live. And sometimes I wonder if some of these people are agents. Because agents, what they do is they always want to talk to men of God. They want to always talk to them. They always want to... Do like they are part of everybody. They, 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 there's a way they do. They like to waste time. They like to study, to get to know their weaknesses, to do. That's what they do. There are so many agents, even you as a believer, be careful. It's not everybody you see on the video that is to be your friend. Some of them are not on this video for the reason that you are on the video. They came to observe you. They came to steal from you. They came to make your mind bad towards this ministry. They have a, they're on a mission to do something. Don't just accept people simply because they watch the video. Always ask the Spirit of God about people. There's discernment. Check them out in the Spirit. Don't just be carried away and say, oh, this one has to be good. Check them out in the Spirit. The devil has his agents everywhere. I've told you this thing before, that when you come to my programs, don't assume everybody is there because of the reason you are there. There are some on a mission to bring me down. Oh, there are so many people on a mission to bring my ministry down. The devil hates my ministry. You don't know? <laughs> there are some people in Prophet T.B. Joshua's church, they came into the church with the intention to attack the man of God. And suddenly, the Spirit of God pam, exposed them. They started to manifest. They started to confess what they came for. But they dressed like regular people. They dressed like people that really wanted to come and be blessed. If they had not confessed that, you would never know. So it's not everybody that comes that is for us. Some of them came to destroy what we have. 
So we have to be in the spirit. We have to be prayerful at all times. We have to even be careful what we hear because some of them may come and make one smart comment and they want you to start thinking of that comment, but they've sown a seed, a seed of the scud, a seed that will eventually make you leave the place that God has put you in. They know exactly what they're doing. They are very strategic. They are agents. Be careful. And not all of them that you will know all of them. Some of them God will not even reveal to you until like the end. But just be careful. It says, pray carefully. Pay careful attention to your own work. For then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done. And you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. For we are each responsible for our own conduct. Those who are taught the word of God should provide for their teachers, sharing all good things with them. Are you guys hearing this part? Verse 6 says, those who are taught the word of God, Galatians 6.6, 6, should provide for their teachers, sharing all good things with them. Verse 7 says, don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. My God. I was saying this and I did not know I was getting to it. Ha! K KJV, King James Vashem says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also rip. I just said that. <laughs> I said that like a few minutes ago. <laughs> My God. And they said, Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will adverse decay and death from the sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will adverse everlasting life from the Spirit. You have to live to please the Spirit. Whatever you do, be led by the Spirit of God. That way, that, that way you will not make mistakes. That way you will know that what you are doing is what God wants you to do. Don't be led by your feelings or by your emotions. You understand what I mean? Don't be following a man of God because you feel sorry for the man of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Like me, you don't have to come to my events because you feel sorry for me. You don't have to watch. If God is not putting you here, if you are not connecting here, it means I am not your prophet. It means you are not supposed to be here. It means there's somewhere else that God has destined you to be. Don't say, well, I'm just feeling for her. Let me just follow her. Don't do that. Be led by the Spirit. Be led by the Spirit of God so you can fulfill your destinies. You understand? It says, those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will avert decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will invest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get tired of doing good, of doing what is good. He said, don't get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Don't get tired of doing good. At just the right time, you will reap a harvest of blessing if you don't give up, sometimes you want to give up doing good because of the way people act, because of the way people treat you, because of the way people lie, because of the way people are cheat, that like they want to cheat. You want to give up. You say, well, the last person I helped, that person was ungrateful. That person did this. Me, I will always keep helping as I'm led. It doesn't matter if the last person did a video to insult me. That's fine. That's on them. But as I am led, I will keep... In fact, I even help more now than I used to help before. It's even getting... In fact, my cousin, Pastor Isaac, said, Woman of God, I don't know how you do this. He said, I don't know how you do this. It's like, you would think I'm crazy, but I'm doing more and more and more. And God is always telling me how please. He is with me. I'm not saying, oh, because of what this one did, I will stop. No, I keep going. I keep going. It's between me and God. That person has to deal with God. That person that did whatever they did. Some of you, you've helped somebody in the past and the person ended up using your help against you and you now made a vow. You said, you know what? I am not helping people again. Anytime I help people, 
They go and use it against me. I am done with helping people. No more. Hey, don't speak like that. That's the devil speaking through you. Don't say, oh, because one person. How about the other good ones? Remember, you didn't do it because of that person. You did it because of God. So if you let that person, what they did to you. See, the devil will not do something that won't hurt you. He will do something that you will really feel it, that will pain you. So he will look for a place or someone that he knows that when that person does something to you, it will pain you. So that person that you helped, if the devil sees how you expect kindness in return, he will turn that kindness to this, to pain you. And then he knows that you want to make a drastic decision. Don't be like that. I tell you, don't be like that. Keep helping people. No matter what, be led by the Spirit to help. The reason I say be led by the Spirit to help is, like you see these beggars that you see on the street. You don't just go out there giving all beggars money. Because some beggars are not even real people. Some of them are evil spirits, agents. They are from the marine kingdom. They are from this. Those who are led by the spirit, they may give, let's say there are five beggars. Let me give you an example on the street. If you are led by the spirit, if one of them is not a good one, it's the devil's agent trying to collect people's money to do something with it. Because the devil always takes advantage of good things and turns it around to do evil with it. I tell you, you will give four of them money as you are led. When you get to that fifth one, you will refuse to give them. Sometimes you will hear clearly, don't give them. Or sometimes something will take your attention and you will not give that fifth one. I was doing a deliverance. I was doing a deliverance. And the demon said something. That they have their own beggars too. That collect money from people. He said, but the, the, the but the um, I think was it me or my cousin that was doing this deliverance? He said, but the ones the the, the true believers they don't give this to the, uh, beggars, that their father tells them not to give them. Do, do you get? What, do you get what I'm saying? He says, but the true believers, they don't give these beggars money, that their father always tells them not to. That they, they go and collect money from people. That's how they take money into their kingdom to give. That they have a lot of their beggars out there. It's the same way that some people that come to you for help, you are not led to help them. Like just because we say help people doesn't mean you just help everybody. There are some that even the spirit will tell you, this one is lying. Do you get what I'm saying? Or you are not led. Like no matter the story they are telling, it's like you are not led. To give them. Some of you will know what I'm saying. You understand what I mean? You will know what I'm saying. There are some that before they even tell their story. God has already told you about them. That somebody like this will come. And you will help. Or sometimes before they even open their mouth. You are already touched to help. There are some that they will tell you all the story in the world. But somehow you are not led to help them. And you just follow that leading. You don't understand Follow that leading. Some of these agents, when I do deliverance, they will say, oh, they've made men of God broke. That they've um, given money to men of God. And um, that money that the men of God took, it, it, it messed up their finances. If now that man of God was led by the Spirit, they would know that that money is not supposed to be taken. There was one Nigerian movie that I watched a long time ago. This pastor... There were these um, false prophets. They were doing a lot of things. But there was this particular man of God. I think some of you may have seen this movie. This man was genuine man of God. and But he, he did not have enough money. Like, you know, the, the, the genuine ones sometimes they struggle with cash and everything. So these false people, these evil people, one, they now sent somebody to there, to this man of God's office. And he had like a big brown envelope with a lot of money in it. 
Some of you may have watched this movie. I think it was one top movie. It exposed a lot of evil in the church and all that. It had a big brown envelope. You know, big brown envelope. It said, Pastor, that the Lord led him to come pay his tithes to the church. Like he doesn't even know this man. The man just came and that, at that very moment, that pastor needed a lot of money to do some stuff. So the devil knew that the pastor needed money. So the devil sent this man, big brown envelope, money that the pastor had never seen before in his life. And the pastor now prayed for him and was excited. But when the pastor went to sleep, God told him, he said, Return this money. Do not accept this money. Return this money. Do not accept this money. But the church needed money. God saw that this money was going to ruin the church finances and everything. It's not like God cannot change the power of the money and destroy the power. But if God gives you specific instruction. Oh, there are some people that have returned the offering to them before. You didn't know? Because that offering wanted to become a curse. Like they felt like they were too obligated to so many things. I had to give it back to them. They became so troublesome. There's one particular one that was insulting me and Pastor Isaac. <laughs> After everything we did for her. But you see what I'm saying? Only to find out that she was actually the reason... Her child has been sick. She went to a native doctor. And because of that, it's in affecting her child. But she kept blaming it on everybody else. So there are different people like this. So the pastor woke up, looked for this guy, and gave him his money back. And the people in that kingdom of darkness, they were upset. Because that money was the trap that they were going to use to bring down this man. To bring down his ministry. But he obeyed God. And he gave it back. What if because of the need of the church, he had said, you know what, but we really need it for rent. We need it for that. We need it for this. We need it for that. He would have been on his own. And when God gives you an instruction, you obey. You don't even question him. So it's not every money we see that we should be excited about. And it's not everybody that comes for us, to us for help. We should always ask as they are talking to us, there is a way you too you can be talking to God. Father, do I help this one? There are sometimes even without talking to God, you are led. You felt so led to help. I have had some people that messaged me, long message. I was not led to help them. One of you messaged me the other day. She said, woman of God, I want you to pay my son's um, school fees or tuition. For I was like, huh, excuse me? Suddenly, I saw a guy send me something. Here's my the, the link um, to pay for towards my school fees. I'm like, huh? Excuse me? Those ones, I could tell you right now, I'm not led to do it. <laughs> you don't even need the spirit to tell me nothing. There are fraudsters. There are scammers. There are people that, let me tell you, you don't know that if somebody comes to you for help and you are led to give them. Most likely, it was God that sent them to you for help. You don't know. Just like the scammers now, using my name, using my cousin's name, my bishop's name, Prophet T.B. Joshua's name, all these men of God's name to create Facebook page, to collect money from you guys. Are you guys just going to give because it's good to give without opening your eyes to do some research? Or because it's woman of God's name that came on. So for that reason, I'm going to send without being wise. No, some of you, they've duped you even with all the announcements that I'm making that you should be careful. Don't just give foolishly like that. Be led by the Spirit of God. Help people. But be led by the Spirit of God. Because the devil can use this as, as a way to bring people down. You understand? Like just because you see Belema Abili sending you, I need money for orphanage. See, you guys know my style by now. Whatever I say will be on my video. But I will not take time to be going privately 
to be messaging you guys asking for money. It's not my style. I don't even send long messages. Even the ones that are so active in my ministry, even Wesu will tell you, since Wesu and I, she's been working with me, I have never sent her a long message past one sentence or two. I, I, I don't know how to do that. I'm so straightforward. Even if I'm wishing you happy birthday, I love you so much. Oh. I would probably just say one or two things. <laughs> I was just telling Pastor Isaac. I said, Pastor, I don't know how to write all these long things that people write about people. <laughs> Even during my bishop's birthday, when I posted this flyer for the event and I wished him happy birthday and I... And I was like, sorry, Bishop, I don't know what else to say, you know. He said, don't worry, since you didn't say much, me too, on your bed, I won't say much. <laughs> and I was laughing. <laughs> he said, don't worry now. On your bed, me too, I will not know what to say. <laughs> I said, I don't know how to write long things. like, Because I, I admire people that sometimes they have a post. They will write a long thing about the person and it's so sweet. It, it sounds so good. I admire it, but I don't know how to write like that. Plus, I don't really know how to speak good English like some of you. Some of you know how to speak English, yo. Hey, some of you, eh? Ah, yeah, yeah. Your English is on point. Nina say your best word is God bless you. Exactly. Anyone that messaged me, even Diana messaged me, was it after the, the last prayer line? She was showing me pictures of conversations she had with some of her, her friends she prays with. Of how God wanted her to fast. Was it last week? And he gave her the same scriptures that we are reading. And he told her similar things that he told me to tell you guys. And all I, I can tell you how many things I, I typed. It was amazingly wow. Because it was very accurate and similar to what we're doing. But all I said is wow. The spirit is one. Or um, keep the fire burning or something. I'm proud of you. I, I didn't say much. Even if I wanted to, I can't. I don't know how to talk much. So if you see somebody messaging you a long message from me, it's not even me. <laughs> you say woman of God doesn't even sound like this. They even say, um, God bless you, child, or something, child. I don't call you guys child. I don't do that. That's not how I talk. You should know the person that you follow. You should know the person. And one thing I notice is a lot of you don't even... Watch the videos. Yesterday, God was speaking to me. He said, tell them to watch the videos. I will do things for them while they watch the videos. That some of them, they just believe in sending messages, prayer requests, but they don't watch the videos. He said, the, the water that I bless for you, he's powerful enough to even, even cure sickness that doctors told you there is no cure. But the devil will make you not to watch the video. So that way you will miss that water. You will miss that prayer. Do you know what is in these audios and videos? In fact, as I'm even talking now, some of you just listening to the word, you feel at peace. There's this peace that has come over you. Just imagine that you were so troubled and you, 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 you were just not at peace. And instead of listening to this audio or joining us to do this fast, you choose to just be sending me a message, sending me a message, and I'm not responding. But you could actually be on the audio listening so that the peace of God could take over you. The devil doesn't want you to listen because he doesn't want you to have that peace. He said, tell them to just watch the videos. I will take care of them. I will do things for them. Sometimes we are on the video. You don't know when I just say, get your water. Let it, let's pray for water. Boom. Nobody, I didn't even write on that video that I will bless water. Or sometimes you don't know when I will pray against the spirit of madness. Maybe somebody that came to give testimony is talking about madness. And before you know, I will pray. Okay, everybody, if there is madness in your family. But you did not know that that kind of thing will happen that day in the video. But because you were watching, you were able to partake in that prayer. So he said, watch the videos. Anything could happen. There was one time on the prayer line, I prayed for them for sparkles or oil to be poured in their hand or something. A lot of people had oil that God poured in their hand. A lot of people had 
um, is it gold dust or whatever things. That was just a prayer line, I think. What if they were not on there? Would they have such encounter? The other day I was telling my story, my one year anniversary. I was telling my story and then I did Holy Ghost encounter. And so many people got filled with the Holy Ghost. Some people that have been wanting the gift of tongues for years received it. What if they were not on that video? You understand what I mean? So just watch. Just listen. You don't know what God will do. I'm not called to be calling people one by one. I'm called to bring people to God, to evangelize, to spread the good news, to put the love of God in people's heart, to make people love God, to make people get closer to God, not to spend the, on, spend the whole day on the phone talking to one person or two. There are some pastors like that. Like Pastor Isaac is a pastor. He's a pastor. Pastors, they are different from we evangelists and all that. They are pastors, meaning they are, they are more patient. They are more willing to spend time to talk to you. They are more, um, you, you understand what I mean? We, we are the ones that we go and we plant the seed. We, 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 you know what I mean? We don't, we, I don't know. You guys should research what I'm saying. So I see a lot of you messaging me. You've tried. I haven't even seen it, but I wish you could just watch the videos. And some of you, when you message me, I still give you that 39 minutes video to watch. Even men, women, I have given them them. Sometimes when they message me, they will type what they're going through, how they are suffering. And God will say, give them the 39 minutes video. Tell them to watch it three times or two times. My dear, at the end, the kind of testimony they send me, hey, it's like, they say, woman of God, the first one, I was removing things from all my body. The second one, I was vomiting and vomiting. The next one, I was on the floor. <coughs> the kind of things they send me, you'll be like, wow, all these things happen from just watching a video. <coughs> what if they did not obey and watch that video? How would they have all this encounter? You understand what I mean? So just watch the videos. Watch the videos. Listen to the audios. God may be speaking to you through it. It is well with all of you. I have to go now. God says it's time for us to go. I will see you guys in the next um, 4 hours, 30 minutes. At 12 o'clock, we'll come again for the 12 o'clock prayer. I told you we have 12 prayers total. 12 prayer line total. Wait, this is the second one, so we have 10 more to go. We have 10 more to go. So I'll see you guys at 12 o'clock. If you missed the beginning of the prayer line, you can always go back and play the audio and listen from the beginning. The scripture we're reading for this fast is Jonah chapter 1 to chapter 4. Some of you already started reading it. I read it in King James and NLT translation. Don't read it like a storybook. Just study it and just ask God to give you a better understanding. Because the way he will explain it to you could be different from the way somebody else will, will understand it. Okay? I love you guys. Stay away from sin. If you're just joining, you can still fast with us. We're doing a three days dry fast and we end on Sunday. No food, no water. If you cannot do without water, drink water. If you cannot do without food, eat. If you cannot fast at all, just join us and pray. There is no restriction for people to join us. Anyone can join us and pray. But for those that can, do what you can and God will help you. God bless all of you. I'll see you at 12. Love you. Bye-bye.